Talk to him. Next, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. I think are coming off of a bye from last week. They're five and four on the year. They are one point favorites on the road against the Las Vegas Raiders, who are also five and four on the year. Forty nine points is the over under. The total has gone over in eight of the Raiders' last nine home games. And the Raiders, they are seven and one straight up in their last eight games at home against the Cincinnati Bengals. Kyle, let's pick the winner. So for this one, I know who I'm picking for why. Uh, both of these teams, both of their last games, they both gave up 41 points. And they both only scored four. Well, the Bengals scored 16, but they Raiders scored 14. Bang, you know, basically the same thing. Um, which team is going to be more arrested? The Bengals came off the bye week. They had an extra week to prepare, like I said earlier. I'm going to go with the Bengals on this one, who had uh, not only the extra week, but... Um, I just think the Raiders are going downhill, and I think the Bengals are are not going up, but they're not going down. I think they're kind of just staying where they are right now, which is if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. But if you're getting a lot worse, you're still getting a lot worse, you know. So I think that's what the Raiders are doing. I'm gonna go Bengals on this one. Give me the home team that is the underdog. Both of these teams are five and four. I, just like I, I think we get a little caught up in what the Bengals could be, yeah. what their potential is. And the Raiders were never supposed to be this wonderful team. They're kind of at where majority of the pundits felt like they would be to begin the year. I mean, they're a 500 team, basically. But in the same breath, the Bengals are as well. So I'm going to go opposite. I'm going to take the Raiders coming off of a nasty, nasty Sunday night loss. Got a bitter taste in their mouth. They're back at home. Okay. And we know Vegas can have a lot of trappings for a, for a young millionaire. And there are a lot of young millionaires that play on the Bengals that are now going to come in town. Um, so give me the road team that has a, a lot of outside factors, you know, maybe going against them when they when they step foot in Las Vegas. So give me the Raiders to win this game. Talk to them. OK, we have the Dallas Cowboys who are seven and two on the year. They are two point favorites on the road against the Kansas City Chiefs. 55 and a half is the over under. I'm going to tell you right now, this is my highest scoring game of the week, easily. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, they are 8 and 1 against the spread in their last nine games. Kansas City, they are 18 and 4 straight up in their last 22 games at home. And the Kansas City Chiefs are also 4 and 1 straight up in their last five games. Kyle, let's pick the winner. Yeah, so this one, um, I got the Cowboys as, I think I have the number four team in my power rankings. Um, I think they are a phenomenal team. I think Dak is a beast. Saying that, I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I'm going to go Patty Mahomes. Um, I said it about three, four weeks ago, I think, when you know they were, quote unquote, dying. Um, I think they're going to figure it out. I thought they're going to figure it out a lot sooner than what they have, but they are starting to get there, I think, a little bit. Um, his guys, I mean, I think what did he have last week? Patrick Mahomes had like 20 plus touchdowns right now. Okay. Now saying that yep. he's also got yeah, like, five last week. Yeah. So he's got 25 touchdowns right now. Okay. Which is pretty high saying that I think he's got like 15, 16 turnovers, which he's got to get that fixed for sure. But I'm going to go the chiefs. I'm gonna go the home team. I think Cowboys, I think it's gonna be tough for them to go into arrowhead. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna go chiefs on this one. Um, even though I do think Cowboys might be a better team. I think the chiefs pull out a win here. But they for sure will not cover. All right. So I'm going to do something tricky, man. You pick the Chiefs. I know for darn sure Hicks, he's going to pick the Chiefs because mm -hmm. he does not like the Cowboys as an Eagles fan. So that allows me to be the only team, if the Cowboys win, to get the dub from the, from the boys. So I'm going to go with the Cowboys, not only because of those reasons, but also because there will be a lot of points scored. Again, fans, this will be my highest scoring game of the week. I will be surprised if this game does not hit. 60 to 65 points because neither team wants to play defense by any means um, and, they, and they light up the scoreboard with you know probably two of the most dynamic throwing quarterbacks in the NFL uh, with, with with that Cowboys men there's no reason why they couldn't win this game like Vegas and the, the boys in a desert clearly feel like you know they're a better team if Cowboys are at home they would be close to a you know five six point favorite you know, if I'm doing the math correctly and now they're on the road and they're still, you know, they're basically a field goal favorite against the Chiefs. So that shows right there that there's a lot of confidence in what they do. 
With all that being said, I'm going to go with the Cowboys. I'm going to go with the team that in the fourth quarter, if any of these teams happen to make a defensive stop, I think it's the Cowboys that do it. So give me the Cowboys, and I'm going to go against you, and I'm predicting, but I'm almost certain I'm also going to be going against going against Hicks here. So give me the Cowboys. Talk to him. All right, three more matchups. We have the Arizona Cardinals, who are 8-2 and two on the season. I do not know if Kyler Murray is playing in this game. I think he is trending to playing, but I can't call it right now. The Cardinals, they are two-and-a-half-point favorites on the road against the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson should be back. He was back last week. He should be playing here again. 50 points. Okay, that tells me he's back. 50 points is the over-under. Uh, the total has gone under in six of Seattle's last seven games, and the total has also gone under in six of Seattle's last nine. I'm sorry, the total has also gone under in seven of Seattle's last nine games at home. Arizona, they are 5-0 and against the spread in their last five road games, as well as 5-0 and straight up in their last five road games. Kyle, let's pick the winner. Ooh, this one's going to be tough, tough, tough. Um, no, if it's no Kyler with Russ, I'm going to go home team. I'm going to go Seahawks. Um, the, even with Russ, though, they we weren't playing the best. And as you guys know, I haven't been, been big on the Seahawks. Um, but I think the Cardinals, they are – since the Seahawks have Geno as a backup, I think with if you take both the starting quarterbacks out, um, the Seahawks are basically the same quote-unquote team on like scheme-wise and what they do. Um, for the Cardinals, if you put anyone else in there besides Kyler Murray, they got to change up a lot. Okay, so saying that, um, I'm gonna go Seahawks just because I think they're gonna be a little bit more consistent. I think Russ is gonna continue getting more comfortable as he's back. He's gonna get more trust in that hand, that throwing arm. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go Seahawks in that. Yeah, I, I try to, I try to pull out my Twitter fingers, man, and see if I can find anything on Kyler. There's no, there's really no new updates. It's still up in the air whether or not he plays. Like you said. If he's not playing, they clearly are a totally different team um, than, than what he is when he's under the helm, man. But uh, and who did you go with? The Seahawks? Yep, I'm going with Hawks. Oh, man. I mean, honestly, this is one of those games I can't call it. Like, if Kyler plays, I'm taking the Cardinals. If he's not playing, then I'm taking the Seahawks. You know, simply put, that's, that's really all you can do. So that's kind of a cop out. You know, it is what it is fans but uh yeah i mean if kyler plays i would take kyler if he doesn't play i'm gonna take the seattle seahawks talk to him all right two more to go we have the pittsburgh steelers who are five three and one on the year at the la chargers who are five and four on the year the chargers are four and a half point favorites at home 47 and a half is the over under Pittsburgh, they are 6-1 and one against the spread in their last seven road games against the Chargers. The Steelers are also 4-1 and one straight up in their last in the in their last five. The Steelers are 4-1 and one straight up in their last five games on the road against the LA Chargers as well. And the total has gone under in six of the Chargers' last eight home games. So with that being said, Kyle, let's pick the winner. Yeah, so this one, uh, it seems like I am going with a lot of home teams. Uh, I think I'm going to go the Chargers. All right, I'm going to charge them here. They're going back and they're a big back and forth team right now, too. They didn't start that way. Um, but in the last four, five, six weeks, it's just, I don't know what's been up with them. But saying that, I do think that they're going to have a um, have a good game this week. The Steelers coming off of, they did not lose, but they didn't beat the Lions. All right. The fact that they did not beat the Lions, that that makes them, a, that made, not even a little, that makes them a lot sus. All right. So, Saying that, I'm going to go the L.A. Chargers um, on the Sunday prime time game. All right. So going back, I um, said I was looking through this, but I found some new information. Update for Kyler Murray. Uh, and this is week 11. So it says practice. Murray practice on Thursday and he's trending towards playing in week 12. So that is next week. Yeah, that'd be next week. And then Roethlisberger. Let me read this. Uh, Steelers offensive coordinator, who was my offensive coordinator in college, by the way, Matt Canada, shout out to you, said Big Ben is preparing as if he's going to play in week 12 also. So it seems like Murray and Ben Roethlisberger may not be playing this week. 
So going back to that last game, I'm going with the Seahawks for sure, um, since it looks like Kyler's not going to play. And then you pick the Chargers. Ooh. Yeah, especially especially if they got Mason Rudolph at the helm. Come on now. He ain't winning nothing. Hey, you know what? And I, I vividly remember this game. No one in the world will remember this. But I think it was two years ago. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers came in and played the L.A. Chargers, who had Phillip Rivers. Uh, the Steelers had Ben Roethlisberger out. Trust me, this is so random. <laughs> but the Steelers had B- Big Ben out. And they had a quarterback with the first name Duck. As oh, yeah, Duck back. Hodges. Duck Hodges. Duck baby. Hodges. Yes, and they came in and they won that game against the Chargers, Kyle. Hey, they won. The, it was the same. It was this. Listen, it was the exact same thing here where everyone's like, the Chargers easy dub. They're going to win. Like, they got the best quarterback. They got Phillip Rivers. You know, same situation here. They got, they got, uh, they got, what's my man's name? I'm a, Justin Herbert. You know, no way. You got a backup quarterback for the Steelers. And all that Duck Hodges, literally from the start of that game, and I told you, I vivid, vividly remember this, that the Chargers were down the entire game. Like, it wasn't even close. Like, they had no shot from the start against a quarterback that I have not heard of since. So, I'm kind of using some of that voodoo, some of that magic, some of that, you know, reminiscence, and I'm, I'm going to pour it into this game here. So, I'm going to take the Steelers. All right. Talk to him. All right. Our Monday night matchup in our last game of the week. We have the New York Giants, the G Men, who are three and six on the year, facing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who came off of a disappointing loss against the football team last week. The Bucs, they are six and three on the on the year. They are eleven point. The Bucs, they are eleven and a half point favorites here at home. Fifty and a half is the over-under. A lot of trends. Uh, you know, I'll read it for you fans because I know our, our synopsis will be quick. Giants, they are four and two against the spread in the last six games. The Giants, they are also 12 and three against the spread in the last 15 road games. Tampa Bay, they are seven and oh straight up in their last seven home games. However, Tampa Bay, they are 0 and five against the spread in their last five home games against the Giants. The total has gone over in the last six games in this matchup. With all that said, Kyle, let's pick the winner. Yeah, so this one, uh, yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go the GOAT, Tom Brady, and go the Bucks. Um, the Giants, I just, I, I think they'll put up a fight, to be honest. I mean, the Bucks, obviously, they got three losses on the year, all right? And those three losses, they weren't, like, like one-point losses. You know, they were, some of them were okay. So, um, they have, Tom Brady and the Bucks, they have some kryptonite. Um, I just don't think the Giants are going to provide what they need to do to win this game, uh, especially, especially uh, down in Tampa Bay. So, um, so I'm gonna go Bucks. You know, probably what's the what's the spread on that? You said eleven and a half. Yeah. Bucks. See, now I don't. I'm not sure if they'll cover. I mean, ten. Nah. I think anything ten ten points or plus in the NFL, I think is a joke. To be honest with you, I mean, I, it just it's so until it, it covers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, until it does, you know, yeah, of course. But, no, but I know what uh, you mean. I know what you mean. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with anything you. that's 10 or plus, I'm probably I'm either either going to take the other team or I'm just not going to bet on the game at all. Uh, but I'm going to go Bucks in that one. Yeah, man, it's hard for me not to go with the Bucks, especially in the bounce back here. But in terms of covering, I would say the Bucks would actually cover, Kyle. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I, 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 I really would. I think the Giants are coming off of a bye. Yes, they are. So Bucks are, you know, n- not in a great position to cover, but. One thing about the Bucks, when they lose, let me see. Let me go back. Were they at home last week? They lost to the football team on the road. They lost to the Saints on the road. And they lost to the Rams on the road. They don't lose at home. They don't. They don't lose at home. They don't lose in Florida. Uh, you know, hey, a little bit of a callback to uh, my Duval boys, the Jags, you know. Going down to Florida is not easy, you know. Ask, ask the Ravens, you know. Going down to Florida, Miami, Tampa Bay, like Jacksonville, like maybe not Jacksonville, but going down to these places and playing, like it's different, especially you know for these teams that are coming from the cold, and now they get a chance to be in the warm, sunny Florida air. Hey man, it ain't the easiest. So I, I obviously have the Bucks winning, uh, and I just have the Bucks covering here. Bucks have they have a higher rated defense. They clearly have a higher rated offense. You know, over under 50 and a half points. If if people are into that, you know, again, the last six games in this matchup have gone over. 
However, one stat I didn't read, the total has gone under in 12 of New York Giants' last 16 games. So I would actually take under here, and I would take the Bucks to cover. So you're looking at, let me see, probably a, I don't know, uh, probably like a 28 to 10 type of game. You know, I, I could see that being happening, 28, 13, you know, something ugly like that. But I, I definitely have the Bucks winning. I definitely have the Bucks covering. All right, man, we did it, bro. We did it, man. We did it. Week week eleven is in the books. Uh, I'm gonna finish the rest of this this uh, Falcons Patriots game. But Kyle, do you have anything you want to say to the fans out there? Hey, man, I just appreciate all you guys uh, for listening. Keep sharing, man. Keep letting your friends know uh, how much you know of a dope show this is. Help us bring these ratings Yay. up so we can go ahead. You know, in the years to come, we can keep building this thing. Um, if you guys didn't like it, like I said, just pretend like it never happened. You never listened to it. You don't. You don't gotta. You don't gotta tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? You gotta tell nobody. Yeah, just keep it. Keep it to yourself. Yeah, hey, you know. You know how the Italians go. You know. Hey, how you doing? Keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So okay. Uh, yeah. But I appreciate you guys, and I just can't wait to talk next week. All right. With that being said, uh, I want to say Kyle and I, we are running our Legacy Indiana, our college recruiting showcase. That is December 4th, Saturday, December 4th. So I know we've been reaching out to a lot of coaches and players. We will continue that. That should be a really good turnout. Um, And, uh, you know, you're talking about the Italians. Bada bing, bada boom, man. We are done with it. Week 11 is in the books. That's all I got to say, man. So from us to you, this is me. Coast T, keep showing us love, and we'll keep bringing you that funk. Peace.